Всем привет, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kubok Russian Cup and our final match of our 2023 and 2024 season. The only expectation that we all had for our beloved Zinyat was just to finish the season strong. Just put on a good performance, put all of the bad performances behind us and just have fun and put on a very good performance play some good football that was all about it so here we go baltica versus Zenit st petersburg in the finals of the russian cubic cup the final score 2-1 for Zenit st petersburg we have defeated baltica we have won the trophy, another silverware in our cabinet, racking up the trophies after trophies. Every season we win one, two, even three trophies, not this year though, but we have plenty of seasons where we have all three trophies. So just what the boys got to keep in mind is just to put on a good performance and play confidently that's all about it we want to finish our season strong we don't want the fans to be pissed off because we already had a very difficult season it was an easy defense of our title we managed to defend but it was very difficult and matter of fact Dinamo Moscow it was their trophy they choked it so we got lucky this year but anyways there's so much to discuss it may be a long video so i do apologize so first and foremost before i start my reaction to this match i do want to apologize for this very late reaction video that i'm posting now it was because today i had an event that i had to attend and that event was from 9 a.m. till about 8 p.m. So I got home very late than the usual and the program kind of got extended. It was supposed to be finished by 7 p.m. but it finished actually at 9 p.m. So I finally got home around like 10, 11 p.m. So now here I am making this video very light. The match of Zinyat's finished way 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 long ago it was for me in my time zone it was at 11 a.m so that was when my my opening session started at so i was indeed not able at all to record a video since i already had a commitment to my program and this very blessed event that i had to take part in so with that being said i did and I was able to watch the highlights and I was able to even watch the score. I, I had the phone on me and I kept tab the score, looking at the stats, looking at everything around and trying my absolute best to be involved with the game. But unfortunately, the only and the best part that I missed was the emotions. The best part I missed was seeing live action that was the most important no matter how much you can try no matter how much you could do and commit to follow but that emotion as a fan watching a game live and seeing a crazy game like that you know it cannot be it cannot be transmitted through just looking at the score so that's that but i do apologize for this very um late video but i do hope that you guys like this video and like my reaction and i will try my absolute best to give the best of details and give my my best reaction and then i will spend a bit of time talking about the ending remarks and the ending of the season and just give my expectations for next season and just that was, that will be the concluding video and if there's like any big news coming out of Zinyat, then obviously I will make a good cover and make a good reaction video on this. This is my goal. This is the goal of this channel is to cover everything Zinyat has to offer us and all the news, all the scores, all the reactions. 
are always on this channel and in English. So I do apologize. That also another apology for the language barrier. So I know a lot of Zenith fans, they are Russian. It's a Russian club. So some of the Russians may not understand, but I'm trying to attract more of those Russians that speak English as well. And yeah, and unfortunately, I don't speak much well Russian. And I hope that one day I can make full videos in Russian, but I'm, I'm learning and I try my best to say some words there and there so I can connect with all of you loyal Russians. So here we go. Let's get straight into the reaction. I won't spend much time. I think I've already talked enough. Get you guys in, in the preview. And we have two big things to talk about. The, the match of today and then the preview and the conclusion of this end of the season. 2-1 against Baltica. Now, for those who haven't watched, the first thing that we will ask ourselves, was it a crazy match? It indeed was. The emotions were high. The boys were buzzing. The energy was through the roof. Nobody expected an insane match like that. I mean, everything went by the last minute. It was just insane. It was nerve-wracking. It was heart-stopping. All the emotion that you can think about, the, the rocky of emotions, the up and downs, insanity, insanity. That was indeed a very, simply put, emotional match. For those who have not watched the match, you missed on a very good match. So the quick summary is we scored two goals. We had not scored a goal all match long. Until the 81st minute, we scored our first goal, tied up with Nino, our defender. And then in the 95th minute, last minute, six additional minute, and in the fifth minute, Nur Nurali Alip, our other defender, perfects his header and wins the game for us. Absolute seas, absolute energy is flying around, electric electric energy from our boys the boys are buzzing the trophy has been won and all is missing is that one minute but no way back for Baltica now the reaction for me is this absolutely buzzing lost my mind I cannot believe it when I was watching the highlights I could feel the intense energy through my screen but I want to look at the most realistic part like obviously Emotion put aside, I still love this match. It was just so insane, just the celebrations. I think we celebrate more harder than Real Madrid when they won their Champions League. Our boys are buzzing. They have great energy and the chemistry is insane. And having a little squad like that and celebrating that hard, it shows that our boys care. And there's a lot of lads in there that even though we may have a tough season, we could just see how bad the boys wanted it we can see how bad and how much toll this season took on our lads and for them winning this trophy with so much energy with so much emotion that was like a burden that was lift off of their shoulders it was clear as the sky so but realistically put the emotion aside once again repeating myself that was just not good. Like, I don't want to take the glory away. I mean, they 110% deserve the victory. We, we worked so hard in the last minute to get that victory done. It was difficult. But realistically, it was totally unacceptable. I will still be fully, fully honest and fully neutral and fully stoic. But that was unacceptable. We played a club. We played against our you know, our talent that we sold. Danila Kazlov. So welcome. Kazlov once again. We already played him. But it's always, it's always a delight. And Kazlov is such a playmaker. And makes some beautiful plays. And he's just such a threat. And what a player for Baltica. He will be so young as well. But Baltica is a club that got relegated 
and seeing it, we are a club that has one, three to five years straight of championship. And this year, we have once again retained and defended our league title successfully. And you're telling me that all the way until the 80th minute, we got absolutely dominated. It is still unacceptable. It is very, very unacceptable. Like, I know the emotions are through the roof. We, we don't care. We got the victory. We got the trophy. We can celebrate. Yes. I'm going to celebrate as well. I was losing my mind as well. Victory is victory. Football is football. Unfortunately, even though football might not be fair at all times, but victory is victory. We got the job done. It was difficult. But we got the victory. We got the trophy. But for next season going on, and looking at our expectations for next season, that was just unacceptable. That was, it, it once again shows how bad our chemistry is lacking, how bad our defensive structure is lacking, and our defensive line. There's just so much holes to be filled in our squad. We still have a very weak squad that could be destroyed at any time. Any other club that that can just, even just a bit, turn up, get some chemistry, get some strength in their squad, we will be we will be toast. We will be easily beatable. I do not see a squad in front of me that is very dangerous, very threatening. That I can surely say. So another my. Now that brings my point to the players and the squad going into next season. Yes, a lot of our veterans like Irogen, Astavoy, Mantuan, Douglas Santos, and many more. A lot of these legends, they will stay at the club. They're pivotal to our club. But there's also other older players that may be also key pieces that have been key pieces for the past that need to be sold. And there are many players that i have i don't not have a definite list that i've made but i have a few players on my mind i will st start off right away by wendell barrios that's a hundred percent for me need to be sold claudinho 50 50 sometimes he can be good but his consistency lacks his ego gets too high that's my only issue with him but he after all, he's a very good playmaker, so if we do end up keeping him, then I, I don't mind. But I still I still believe that we can get a way better quality player from elsewhere and just replace Claudinho. So we have so many holes, and like I said, I think it's a big mistake for signing Sirke Simak to a five-year, but... Now we're stuck. The decision is made. So now we have to look forward. I cannot. Yes. We can still sack Sirke Simak. But if Zinyet, our staff, our board has given Sim Simak five years, that probably means that in their project, Simak will stay long term. So what we have to do we just have to buy new players but the most important part that i want my focus to be on that a lot of our staff a lot of our boards sleeps on is our academy we've seen our own academy player kazlov who last year had a few games uh, not starting but he had some good minutes with zinyet and honestly i was impressed i was really admiring and i would hope that we have we would have given him more time, but I'm I'm happy that he's already thriving in Zinyet. Zinyet does not seem at the moment to be uh, a good place for our academy players, for our young players. The only player that I've consistently seen that have has become regular in our squad is Dimitri Vasiliev. But the other lads, but I can think about Alexei Baranovsky. And so many more players that deserve more time. And there's so many names out there that we may never heard them because they're still in the academy when we haven't seen them on a big stage yet. 
So obviously when they will stop playing, we will get to know their name. So that those are my biggest expectations. Just the mentality of the group needs to be changed. Things need to be changed. The squad needs to be changed like majorly because you know we still need like I believe that we don't need just one player. We don't need just two players. I think we need about in I would say in between three three to like six seven eight ish that would be like like the number the target number that I, I would be personally looking at but that season was difficult it's season it's a special season definitely because we can we can learn from it and it's it was a season of highly of obstacles and adversity but we have to get into next season and just strengthen ourselves. We cannot stay how we stayed this season. And we just have to improve. That that's what it is. Just our full focus on an academy, signing players, signing talent, and signing youngsters for our future. That's also important. We need we need players that that can that we can in, include in the long term project and not just a few years, like a year or two year rentals. There are players that like that, that clubs just get them for maybe like a year or two years and they're not included in the long-term project. So it is it is important to gather our informations, our formations, our systems and just formulate a great plan, formulate a good system in the club because at the moment, I think that Zinyanz's system has been lacking a lot and it has fallen down. It hasn't been as strong as it has been in the last, like in the, in the last 10 years. In the last 10 years, we were really good with, with other legends like Hulk and Suba. I hope I pronounced his name right, but there's so many other legends that have played for, for Zinyanz. I felt like their other squads were much stronger. Recently, our squads have become much weaker. They don't seem as threatening. I haven't seen proper threats. Yes, we are winning trophies, but that's because of the other clubs' misery. Their other clubs' mistakes. The other clubs of of weakness. The other clubs of lack of focus and not being in a hunger mode, striking when when they need to, they waited too long or they made too many mistakes and they had a weak mindset. So we, we got lucky on, on many occasions, but this season is something that was really, really rocky and it's a season that we need to just sit back and evaluate every single game. But number one though, net number one, yes, we have so much to focus, academy, players, etc., etc. But my number one, my number one is defense because this year it was awful. We cannot keep a clean sheet. So I expect that this summer in the window we bring in some talented defenders because we cannot keep with this same defensive line. We have good players, but the system of the defense is awful. It's terrible. It's garbage. I'm telling you, I I cannot wait any more longer than that. We gave them enough chances, and many of the players are like, let's say, about in their thirties now. Like I think Alip and Santos. If I'm wrong, if I'm not mistaken, they're either like you know 28, 29, 30. So they're they're reaching their age where, yes, they are at the top of their prime. They are in their primes, but they're about to very soon hit a decline. So you have to. Think about your future project. So that comes back to the saying of will they be in their future project? Will their body decline? So we have to obviously like their time of development is done. So you have to really evaluate these players and see if they're truly worthy of keeping in our squad. Are they truly valuable? Because these players are still at this age, they still hold value and their play still holds value. So let's say if they don't seem a very good fit for our future project, then just sell them when they hold value because if let's say you keep waiting for too long, then their value might drop very easy. It happens all the time where clubs, they give the players more chances, which is 
okay, if if that player has been a legend before and now his form dropped and now you're trying to give him a chance, trying to be, be loyal to him, but now it's too late, I would understand. But some other players, like, not that every player deserves this type of treatment. So that, that that's what it is. Let me know what you guys think about the season. There's so much, I mean, I've, I've covered pretty much everything. Goalkeeping and the city to be judged, I think... Adamov was such a perfect signing. He's shown already so much maturity. He's he's been so fantastic already, um, a starter, and already has made his mark. And yes, he definitely deserves to be in our uh, future project. Definitely, hundred percent. Like, just needs a bit more time, more experience. But he will become a threat in the Russian Premier League. He will definitely dominate very very soon. He just needs. A good defensive line. That's it. That's our biggest problem of Zinyet. When you see Zinyet, you say equal defensive problems as you know, you circle it three, four, five, six times as many times as you can to fix that problem. It needs to be looked at. That's it. That's all. So yeah, goalkeeping is doesn't need to be changed. Then Denis, Denis Adamov is perfect for us. Great signing, fantastic charisma fantastic presence in the in the pipes and also having a backup of very experienced um very mature Mikhail Kirjakov who is who had been and is still on his best days the best goalkeeper in Russia you know alongside with the legend himself Akin Fiv after Kirjakov is the best in Russia when it comes to goalkeeping, he's an absolute legend. And then if he's not available, then we have a third stringer in Vazoitin, who is also very experienced, very mature. He has many games, many, many games under his belt. You have full confidence in him. We don't need to worry. With him, even when he does start, you feel no stress. You feel no concern because you know this is a player this this is a keeper that has mm, very 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 much experience you don't need to stress about it so here we go this is my final thoughts i want to know what you guys think and i want to thank you all for for being with me in this season and if there's no news i mean i i would be really surprised if there's no news but if there is it would be rare but if there isn't, I want to wish you, still want to wish you all a very good season. And I want to thank you all for following me, even though it was a smaller number. But I'm really thankful for each one of you, even if it's like four or five views. I don't mind. I'm really passionate about Zinyet. I love Zinyet. And I will continue doing it season after season. And we, I hope that you can join me in the long term in my project, long-term project, and you can keep supporting me, keeping by my side, and let's just see our beloved Zinyat grow, and I hope I can grow this channel out as well, but I hope that we can get some more news, and I will keep all of you guys updated, and let's just keep focusing, and just once again, thank you all for following me in this season, I hope all of you enjoyed. So that's it from my side. I'm signing out. So spasiba, 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 spasiba for watching my video. I wish you all a great night. Das Vidanya. Slava Zinyet. Slava Zinyet.